Welcome back, friends. Welcome back. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with another edition of everyone's favorite D program, Solutions Watch, where week in and week out, we, that is you and I, are engaged in the task of rolling up our sleeves and looking at different ways that we can make a difference in this world, that we can change things for the better, because the world is, and the world of news, is not just, oh, they, them, those, doing things to us. It is, more importantly, about what we can be doing for ourselves. So on that note, I'm going to propose today that we t examine a seemingly very simple, but potentially very powerful idea, the idea of paying it forward. Now, I know that my switched on, literate, very intelligent audience, when they hear the term pay it forward, will not be thinking about some schmaltzy Hollywood predictive programming starring known Jeffrey Epstein associate Kevin Spacey. No, 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 no. You are thinking about this idea in its broader cultural context. For example, perhaps you are put in mind of the 1784 letter by Benjamin Franklin to Benjamin Webb, a young man who was in dire circumstances and requesting a loan from Benjamin Franklin. And Franklin wrote back to say, I send you here with a bill of 10 Louis, Louis d'or, I do not pretend to give such a sum, I only lend it to you. When you shall return to your country with a good character, you cannot fail of getting into some business that will, in time, enable you to pay all your debts. In that case, when you meet with another honest man in similar distress, you must pay me by lending this sum to him, enjoining him to discharge the debt by a like operation when he shall be able and shall meet with such another opportunity. I hope it may thus go through many hands before it meets with a knave that will stop its progress. This is a trick of mine for doing a deal of good with a little money. I am not rich enough to afford much in good works, and so I'm obliged, am obliged to be cunning and make the most of a little. As I say, I'm sure my audience knows some of the context and history of this idea, and the fact that it really does extend backwards in time thousands of years across many different cultures and contexts. For example, you can turn to that bastion of truthiness, Wikipedia, for more information about that context, where you will find no shortage of examples of this paying it forward idea throughout history. For example, from its potential first literary origin in Discolos by Menander, question mark. Anyway, you can read through that um, if you are inclined. Or uh, there are biblical passages that, uh, that are related to this concept. There are passages, for example, Ralph Waldo Emerson, all the way up to the 20th century, no shortage of examples. As I say, there are many examples of this idea. And perhaps the most in interesting modern manifestation that people come across is those drive-through chains of people paying for the order behind them on the condition that that person then pays for the order behind them, etc., etc. And um, anyway, I I'm sure people have heard of this concept, and there are better and worse uses of that. Buying garbage fast food at a drive-through, I think, is probably one of the lowest forms of expression of this. But let me give you a much, much higher expression of this concept, and one that pertains to myself and my own journey through life, um, which is that as children, one, as a child, one cannot possibly appreciate the gifts that one is given. When one is given the gift, the greatest, perhaps the greatest gift that a human being can be given, which is a loving, supportive household. And Similarly, I too, as a child, could not possibly have appreciated or fathomed the depth of, well, uh, blessing that I had in growing up in a loving, supportive household with two parents who absolutely did love me and my brothers. We were loved and supported and taken care of and fostered in an environment of love. And that potentially is for any merits that I have, any, any gifts that I have, stem from that fundamental gift, the gift of love that was given to me by my parents. And now that I am older and I can appreciate that, I can also appreciate that in a sense, that was my parents' own gift that they had received and then passed on to us. I know, for example, my mother's family, a very large family of mostly sisters and one brother um, with two very loving parents that 
by all accounts and by everything that I've seen with all the interactions, was an incredibly close, loving family, very supportive. And I now realize my mother took that love and helped pass, pay it forward onto us, me and my brothers. And now it is my duty as a father to take that love and pass it on to my children, to pay it forward to my children. And I do not want, I do not want or expect that my children will pay that back to me in gratitude. I, if, I fervently hope that they will pay that forward to their children. That is the real gift that keeps on giving, hopefully in an unbroken chain from here to eternity. That is the power of paying it forward. And it's an incredible concept. And one that I, again, the, the very fact that it has been articulated so many times in so many different contexts throughout all of human history speaks to the fact this is a cross-temporal, cross-cultural idea that pertains all to, at all times in all areas of human activity. And I think as humans, we fundamentally can understand this concept. It doesn't take much elaboration. I've already spent more time elaborating it than perhaps it needs. So, with all of that in mind, yes, of course, this is a basic idea that many people have encountered in some form in the past, and with a moment's cogitation, you too will be able to understand and appreciate the power of this idea. But having said that, as always, it is, I think, important to be consciously directing our intentions and thinking about these concepts and how we can apply them to the world that we're living in. Because, as you know, Solutions Watch is not about, oh, they, them, those are doing these bad things to us. Oh, poor us. Oh, look at what they are doing. No, it is about what we can do to make this world a better place. So, all of us have some gifts, some blessings that have accrued to us throughout our life, in some aspect, whatever that may be. And the question is, is there a way to pay that forward in a way that will help? Well, these ideas... As I say, these are not new, radically new ideas or concepts to anyone, and certainly not to myself. But it was in a certain context that this really struck me as something that could be a very interesting and innovative way forward in the independent media space generally. And the person who paid this idea forward to me, in a sense, was Aaron Smith of the Subtle Cane podcast. Now, I hope you're at least somewhat familiar with the Subtle Cane podcast, because if for no other reason, I've been a guest on it a couple of times in the recent past. So I'll throw the links into those appearances and into the podcast generally so that you can become acquainted if you're so inclined. But recently I was listening to the Subtle Cane podcast and an interesting thing happened. Um, he was interviewing previous Corbett Report guest Frude Klevstuhl. And he was applying a new concept to the podcasting model, as I'm sure many people have heard before, the value for value model, where a podcaster obviously puts the information, puts the podcast out, works on it, it is a labor of love, but puts it out to the world for free, and asks in return, well, if you get value from this podcast, can you return it, please, with something likewise valuable? And whether that's money or time or effort, or maybe you can design a logo for someone, or you can do this, or you can do that, and paying it back in that sense. So that's the value for value model that I'm sure people have heard of in the podcasting space before. But Aaron Smith was thinking about a different type of model, a pay it forward model. Instead of taking the, the value of what you have gained from a podcast and paying it back in some monetary sense, let alone anything else, how about taking that value and paying it forward to an organization or a group or a person or something that actually needs whatever it is that you're uh, inclined to pay forward. Now, that is an interesting concept, and it could happen in a lot of different ways. And in the um, interview that I was listening to with uh, between Aaron and Frude, uh, he asked Frude, if you were going to pay forward this episode to some thing, to someone, who would it be? And Frude, very kindly, I had truly nothing to do with this, but Frude said uh, that the Corbett Report and James Corbett's work has really helped me out, so I would appreciate if people um, subscribed or, or uh, uh, signed up for James Corbett's work. And I very much appreciate that. Thank you, Frude. So now I think it's my, it's incumbent on me to pay this idea forward. And that's exactly what I intend to do today. So I recently had a chance to talk to Aaron Smith about this idea of paying it forward 
when and where and how did he come up with this idea? What does he intend for it? So let's listen to a snippet of my recent conversation with Aaron Smith, in which I started by asking him to tell us a little bit about the Subtle Cane podcast and where, when, why, and how it came to be started. Well, the, uh, the when and why and the how all had to do with the pandemic and trying to go through nursing school at the time and finding myself at my front door, gnashing my teeth and trying to figure out what do I do with the stuff that I'm learning? I feel alone. Obviously, I'm not the only one. Um, and what can I do about about speaking up and being another voice um, trying to combat the narrative and help people like um, you helped me during that time as well, uh, as far as um, being able to hear alternate things from the mainstream narratives and, and understanding that there's maybe there's some other motivations, maybe there's some other things going on. And so that got me going. I, I've always had an interest in philosophy um, and I'm a Christian and I like apologetics. I'm a big, big fan of reading through the, the CS Lewis library and GK Chesterton. And so, um, that's always been interesting to me, but then also the, the wide world in general and the idea that if we don't, um, have a grassroots community of people that are willing to, to speak up and, and say what's on their mind and advocate for free speech and open source journalism. Um, well, we only have ourselves to, to blame if, if something doesn't go right for us, which it won't, if, if people don't decide to stand up and do something. So in my own little way, in my own little corner of, of Wisconsin, I'm trying to do a little something along those lines. Um, I, I appreciate that response on a number of levels. One, it is the most gratifying feedback that I ever received, that my work has helped contribute to someone's understanding or helped motivate them in a certain way. But when I reflect on why, why is that the most gratifying feedback that I receive? I think it is because I want to think that the work that I'm doing is not just, it is not just hot air. These aren't just words coming out of my mouth. These are real ideas that I hope I can convey to the audience that they can then use to do something in the world, whether that is create a podcast and help spread that understanding or whatever it is that they do with that knowledge. I, I like to see it become something in the real world. And that is a concept that, well, I know you've been thinking about recently because I caught on a recent edition of your podcast. You were talking to previous Solutions Watch guest, Frude Klevstuhl. And while we on Solutions Watch were talking about his book, you were talking with him about that, but you also introduced a new idea in that particular podcast. The idea of asking your audience not to just support your work, not just to, okay, I like this podcast, I'm going to give you some money, but to pay forward their appreciation of your work into some other cause or idea. And I, I thought that was a wonderful, it's a great idea and something that I certainly want to be thinking about more going forward with my own work. But you tell us a little bit about that idea, where it came from, and how you're using it. Well, to be honest, the first the first time that it crossed my mind was uh, about two years ago, December, right before Christmas. Uh, my neighbors had a house fire, and um, they had a give send go um, campaign going, and I decided instead of doing my normal value for value segment that I would just say whatever you were thinking about donating to the show, whatever you had in mind, if I provided value to you, please provide value back in the form of a donation to this family that's in need right now. And that was the first time that it came to mind. And then it was about the holiday time uh, this year, this last year. And I, it occurred to me, you know, I could do that on a regular basis. And, and you know, I'm, I have a full-time job. You know, I'm a nurse and uh, my wife's a teacher. Our bills are paid. The the roof's over our head. Would I like to get, uh, you know, compensated in some way for the work that I do on the podcast? Yeah. But at the same time, uh, my motivation for doing this is is really to help people out. And if I can direct people in, in a way in, into a, a need. So I'm trying to feature a need on every podcast. Uh, just 
and it can come from the guests or if if I don't get something um, for myself. And for that episode, I had asked Rhoda, uh, so is there anything in particular you would like me to feature this uh, episode? And he echoed what I had just uh, shared earlier, that you had really helped him through some difficult times in the, uh, during the pandemic. And he said, James Corbett. And I said, well, that works for me. I'm, I'm a paid subscriber of CorbettReport.com. So uh, that was how that came about. Um, it was a genuine um, desire to do just that, pay it forward, give, give someone else um, that sense of community. And, and in a way, I'm asking people to, in the Solutions Watch uh, mindset, which you helped inspire as well, um, I'm asking people to be more involved in their community, more involved in their local spheres of influence in the world within which they actually have agency. And so how do I do that as a podcaster in a way that shows that I got a little skin in the game and that I'm actually willing to do what I say to do. And, and one way I can do that, I figured to try and lead by example, um, would be to do the pay it forward value for value. And so that's sort of how that came around. That's Aaron Smith of the Subtle Cane podcast with a very simple, but potentially very powerful idea. And it is certainly an idea that I want to take on board and consider how to move forward with Solutions Watch, with my work generally, uh, in the future. Yes, uh, obviously I do require your support in order to continue what, doing what I'm doing, but I would also like at least some some portion of that support to be in the form of paying it forward to other worthy causes and ideas. I want this podcast not only to be about me and James Corbin is sitting here bloviating and expounding hot air. No, I want I want something to manifest in the real world as a result of this. And what better way than to ask you to pay it forward? Now, there are a number of different ways that we could take this idea and run with it. For example, we could take the very, 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 very broad approach or the very specific approach. And it really depends. Let's let's break this down to brass tacks. So, for example, let's, let's say we're examining a very specific problem, like the uh, the people who have been put out of work as a result of their refusing to get the jab, some of whom are still out of work, or at least on on indefinite hold or pause of their, their activities or what have you. That, that still exists in certain corners of this world, um, including, unfortunately, in my home and native land of Canada, or at least certain provinces thereof. So if we're looking at a problem like that, and then, of course, the question is, well, what what is the solution? What is the way forward? What can we do about that? We could take a very general and broad approach. And I could say, well, okay, so today, let's pay it forward to all those people. If there are people in your life that you know have been affected by this, please pay forward whatever gratitude you have for this podcast to those people. Help support them. And we could leave it at that. It's just sort of a general, broad approach or a general idea. Or we can make it very specific. Okay, so here is an organization that is providing legal representation to people who have been put out of work as a result of the scandemic or something along those lines. And here, here's the details on that specific organization. Now, the danger of that, as always, is there are... Uh, I realize that I certainly take the responsibility of sitting in here in front of a microphone with at the very least tens of thousands of people around the world who are listening to me right now and some poor proportion thereof of people who take what I say very seriously and will take that on board, I take that as a huge responsibility. I don't take that lightly. So if I promote a specific organization or a specific group, then surely I must have vetted it myself. It comes with the James Corbett stamp of approval. And if it, you know, if there's anything wonky about it, well, James told me to do it. I certainly don't want to fall into that trap because that unfortunately can have devastating consequences and goes against this idea in general. What if, what if even the great James Corbett, what if, what if I get scammed or fooled or um, roped into supporting something that in the end turns out to be a problem, a scam, what have you. So I think the caveat, if we ever go into the specific pay it forward in this way kind of format, I, I, I certainly think that the giant caveat on this, as always, and with everything that I ever do, is do not 
Take my word for it. Do not believe it because James Corbett says it. Do not do what I say because I say it. I'm certainly not telling anyone what to do with their time, their money, their attention, their energy, what have you. I can make suggestions, and you could take that on board for what it's worth. But always, 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 always vet and research everything for yourself. I know I don't need to say that, but I will say it every single time because I want that to be as explicit as possible. Having said all of that, the question then, okay, at, at any rate, this is an organic idea, like every Solutions Watch idea. It is prone to, to evolve, to grow, to take off, to become some great, amazing thing, or to wither away on the branch and, and die away as no one's interested or what have you. I don't know. I don't know for any of these solutions what will stick, what won't. That's the whole point of Solutions Watch. Let's try it out and see how it works. That being said, okay, let's try it out. I, I don't know how or in what way I, I will pay this work forward in the future. I certainly do plan to do so, but what's the best way forward with that? I am very much interested in your input on that. So if you are a Corporate Report member, please log into CorporateReport.com. Leave your suggestions in the comments for this edition of Solutions Watch. Um, suggestions in all manners. For example, how to proceed with the general pay it forward or the specific pay it forward. If you have specific organizations or groups or ideas in mind of ways that people can pay forward, I'd be interested in that feedback as well, as I'm sure everyone else would. So that is one way that we will proceed with this idea. But uh, in another, much more nuts and bolts way, I I'm going to actually pay forward this episode of CorbettReport.com, of the Solutions Watch podcast. And so as my way of paying forward the idea that was paid forward to me by Frud on Aaron's podcast, I want to not pay it back to Frud, but to pay that generosity forward to another group or organization. So I decided to let Aaron I asked Aaron, do you have an organization or a group in mind? If we were going to pay forward this edition of Solutions Watch, do you have a group in mind that you would like to pay forward to? And he did. He had a specific suggestion of a group called Enough is Enough at enough.org that he, su he suggested as a way for people to pay forward their gratitude for this conversation. And I will leave it to you to do that research on enough.org. I'm going to include the link there as well as, and that of course has all the information about this group, this organization, what it is, how it is registered as a 501c3, the various establishment media um, uh, uh, outlets that have promoted this in the past, its vision about protecting children from the dangers of online predation, but how that also interfaces with the legislative system and shared public responsibility etc., and a lot of other language that I personally am uncomfortable with. I have looked into this organization, and I, you know, I have my reservations about it. At any rate, I'm a Canadian in Japan, so this specifically American uh, group that's talking about the United States Constitution, etc., well, at any rate, that's an American thing for Americans to decide on. Um, so, uh, as always, you are responsible for your own mind and what you do with it, so I will put enough.org in the the show notes so that you can go and explore that and see if that is the type of organization you want to devote yourself to. And as Aaron said in my conversation with him, if you find red flags about this, please do let him know. And he provided an email address that he'd like to hear your feedback about this. And I think that's that's probably the best way forward if we are going to go with specific suggestions. Uh, certainly, as always, don't take my word for it. Don't take Aaron's word for it or anyone else's. Do your own research. And if you find problems, please do let whoever is telling you about that, please let them know about those problems. Um, uh, at any rate, if we want to take the general approach, so Aaron is specifically highlighting the work of enough is enough at enough.org, but more broadly, the problem of predation online, child predators, etc., that do exist online and what can be done about that is a very broad problem that admits of many, many, many possible solutions and things that we can be working towards. And I think it is a worthy cause as a parent myself who has two young children who are going to, at some point, start getting online. I am very, very concerned about such things and I'm very interested in helping support causes and organizations and groups and individuals, question mark, um, who are working along those lines. So I'm very interested to hear your feedback on that. Is there a way to pay forward just in the general concept and space of 
dealing with and finding ways to uh, mitigate child predation online. I think it's a very worthy cause and something to think about. So I'm very interested in your feedback on that as well. All of that being said, as you know, again, Solutions Watch is an ongoing, ever evolving, expanding work of ideas that we're throwing out here and examining and talking about and finding the best way forward. And we will keep what sticks and the rest may wither away. So let's find out what is the best way to use this pay it forward method and model, which I really think could be a wonderful, powerful tool for the independent media, but could be could be abused and could be sending people in the wrong direction. So at any rate, there's a lot to think about there. And uh, as I say, I will be exploring this idea further in the future and thinking about ways that people can pay forward their gratitude for this work. So th- at any rate, thank you very much to Aaron and to Frud for bringing this idea and this concept to my attention. And let's see what we can do with it. But as always, it's ultimately in your hands out there. So I'm interested in your feedback and responses. Once again, Corbett Report members, please do log into the site, leave your suggestions and thoughts and comments on this concept at CorbettReport.com. But that's going to do it for today. I am James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, thanking you for joining me and asking you to join me again in the near future.